learned from the best. Hey everybody, how you doing? I'm Eric. It's Ty. And we are Shantoto Cast. Shantoto Cast. Uh, we don't know what episode number this is. I think this is nine. I mean, we recorded a lot of stuff out of order, yeah. so what is it? the numbers in the title, it doesn't matter. Yeah, what yeah, yeah is. it doesn't matter. But the, what does matter is that this is our final episode, um, as per the usual. Yep. Uh, why, so why now? This what is a happened? little thing, and this is something I want to announce on the show. I'm going to be the lead on the Untitled Goose Game TCG. Uh, I already have a lot of stuff planned out. I already know exactly how it's going to play. I even know the top three meta decks, which are going to be Honk Control, Five Color Humans, and Sky Striker. Okay. But anyway, <laughs> on to our episode <laughs> for the day. <laughs> I really did not expect the last one. <laughs> They're just too good. They made other card games. <laughs> but, so, this episode, um, we're going to be talking about uh, kind of the traditional archetypes. So, these are archetypes that kind of carried on through a lot of TCGs. Uh, some of you might already know them. But it's aggro, control, and combo. And these are just kind of themes that are just act, kind of exist in every card game in one way or another, really. They were very present in early Magic the Gathering. And they're even still pretty prevalent in other card games. Sometimes they're not as prevalent. Sometimes they are. It's a little hard to explain, but we're definitely going to get into it as we go along. Right. So, um... Let it be known that these decks don't always work exactly how they're described here. Um, aggro decks can outpace control. They can get around things. Um, you know, aggro decks sometimes blow their load too quick and then are left with no options afterward. Mm -hmm. um, you know, combo beats other things. Um, sometimes just, combo can get together before aggro can. Yeah, it's... Um, sometimes control beats combo because it can stop yeah the combo. i'm, like, I'm bad at describing the whole yeah. triangle here but yeah. it's, it's a rock paper scissors game yeah. we'll get to basically it basically the idea of the rock paper scissors is that control beats aggro aggro beats combo combo beats control and in there there's kind of subtypes that we're probably not going to talk about too much today which mm -hmm. are like tempo and uh what's the other mid-range um and those kind of have their own spots we'll probably talk about them a little bit later um but we might as well just kind of, we just want to focus on the main three, which is aggro control combo. Right. How they're kind of represented in other TCGs, and then how they kind of exist in FFTCG. Mm -hmm. um, but let's just jump straight in with one of your favorite ways to play, aggro. See, everybody says that, but I actually am not terribly partial. You you played like two hasties against me last time we played, like turn two. Okay, <laughs> I like including okay. I like including haste in my decks, but that doesn't make me an aggro player. It makes you an aggro player. Anyway. Uh-oh, we have a kitty. Hi, cat. Come here, cat. Hi, Evie. Sorry for the distraction. Someone else who likes to play aggro. Sorry. Yeah, that is true. My cat, does, my, she likes aggro. Yeah. <laughs> she's but, fast, she's swift, she's nimble, and she's a very, very rarely but sometimes angry. She really likes playing fast and small forwards. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which is our first <laughs> bullet point. <laughs> yeah. So the style of aggro is typically a deck filled with a lot of small and fast forwards slash creatures slash monsters, whatever. Um, it tends to focus on dealing direct damage to the face, and any kind of removal is just to get blockers out of the way. Um, it really doesn't have any reason to deal with anything like um, freezing and dulling, um, you know, it doesn't worry about uh, banishing or whatever. It's just exclusively kill that thing just so I can get to face. It, there's not a whole lot of strategy involved on that level. Don't yeah. don't take me wrong. There is strategy involved in aggro decks. Yeah, it, it is kind of hard to play aggro. Aggro always seems like that kind of easy archetype to play because mm -hmm. it's just like, oh, I just need to go face. Uh, but that's not always how it is. Like, yeah, it's, there's a there, smart and a stupid way yeah. to go about doing that. Yeah, like there is... With all of these play styles, there's an easy way to stereotype it, mm -hmm. but it's always a little bit more complex than that. And you'll kind of see that when we talk about the other TCGs that have them. So, for example, when it comes to aggro, Magic has Mono Red Aggro, uh, which is kind of a long-running deck. It's just uh, red deck wins. Right. Um, <laughs> a recent example is Hazard Aggro, which was in this last format that's rotating out now. Um, Eldrazi aggro is always something that's kind of yeah. modern, yeah. which I love. Um, 
And then moving on to Hearthstone, which is where I get to talk about this. In yeah, depth. this is your actual specialty. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, so, I mean, you, yeah. so for, there's four decks here, and then there's one other one that I'm going to add. Uh, there's Pirate Warrior, which if you guys played during, I believe this is Mean Streets meta, like Pirate Warrior was like scary. It could kill you by turn five when you're at 30 health. Like you're constantly losing five health a turn. Like tons of stuff's happening constantly. Pirate Rogue, which was kind of the same thing. Zulok usually tends to play kind of a mix of control and aggro, but usually goes aggro. Um, Odd Paladin in this past meta was very aggro, mm -hmm. just filled up the board, just swung. Yeah, that was was constantly. that a dragon variant or no? No, no, no okay. it was just because the whole thing is that Odd let you put out two soldiers a turn. Oh, okay. So you were just constantly putting yep. out two one ones, and then you were just and constantly buffing them, and yeah, buffing them, yep. going face. Okay, right. Um, and then the other deck I forgot to mention is Face Hunter, which has always been kind of around. Um, it's funny because right now Hunter is very nuanced, but it's still very aggro. It's still like, oh, it's well, turn seven. I mean, Hunter is just a free damage to face yeah. every turn. Yeah. But I love that Hunter's evolved to this point where it's like, oh, it's turn eight. Here's an eight eight to your face. Yep. <laughs> um, but those are just kind of. Prime examples. If you played against any of those decks, you understand. And then in Yu-Gi-Oh, my personal favorite deck was Fluffles. I was going to say, you, you can that. still spit every yeah. combo in that deck to make your big board yeah. happen in your sleep. <laughs> still, though, something to, worth pointing out for Yu-Gi-Oh is, uh, as we mentioned before, like, it's... Uh, aggro is very, like, just go face, like, don't mm -hmm. worry about combos or anything. Everything in Yu-Gi-Oh! is kind of combo-y. You really need yeah. the right cards in hand to get that. But Fluffles, specifically, your end goal was remove their cre remove their monsters, remove their back row, mm -hmm. swing face. Yeah. Just con on turn two. Like, that was your only goal. Yep. And then same with Luna Lights. Luna, Luna Lights is similar. Just hit everything, make sure everything's dead. And people, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, just... Don't be a jerk about it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I don't play Yu-Gi-Oh! anymore. I just know what I hear, get, you know, over here um, by, you know, uh, how, how do I put it? Um, I, well, I was going to say, I hear it local, but I, it's not a, um, it's not an active eavesdropping. It's an, I don't get a choice. It's kind of <laughs> just going to happen because yeah. they're, they're there in the shop. Yeah. Um, but I, I kind of understand the dinos worked a bit the same. Yeah, dinos were dinos pretty were aggro. Dinos were very aggro. They were, they were this word stun aggro. Like, it was, it was still aggro. Mm -hmm. You could argue that it was control, but it was very aggro-centered because yeah. your plan was to win in one Same turn. with the gears for a little while. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, uh, even Ancient Gear was a, um, a vague a aggro deck. It was a little control, but it was mm -hmm. more so... Like, right. I'm just going to put out this four, 4K four beater swing three times with it. Mm -hmm. um, but moving on to in Final Fantasy, yeah. um, aggro is really dangerous because there is so much control available in this game. Yeah. Um, and we're going to get kind of into why that is in a minute yeah. when we talk about control. But mostly it's dangerous because you only have to hit the opponent's face seven times. Um, in other games, you, can, you have to deal with a number value... You have to deal with some sort of um, health mechanic. Yeah, you have to deal 20 damage. You have to break 10 shields. Yeah, and in this game, you don't heal in any way. Mm -hmm. There's no canceling. There's no nothing like in White Schwartz. Yeah. Um, there's there's no gaining health back via any kind of other method. Yeah. It is simply you take damage to face. Mm -hmm. You take damage to face. It is yeah. there. It is stuck. No asterisk. Right. Yet. Yet. For of all course. we know. Opus 10 will literally just have a porum that just heals you. I mean, that'd be but awesome. It would be awesome, but it's not something we have yet. Yeah. And it's funny because this FFTCG lends itself to aggro, kind of. Because once again, you only have to hit face seven times. Like other games, you have to hit face ten times. Mm -hmm. You have to hit face way more, or you have to hit face way less. Yeah. That um, being said, a heal, any kind of heal mechanic in this game would be really hard to balance. Mm -hmm. So I'd be curious to see how they do it if they do it. Yeah. Um, Stay tuned for our create a card episode. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, that's going to be fun. <laughs> I have ideas for that. But mm -hmm. anyway, um, unsurprisingly, red is one of the biggest aggro colors, but uh, Final Fantasy hasn't seen a whole lot of red aggro decks. Yeah. At least not since Opus 1 and 2. Yeah, now we're seeing a little bit of it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's funny because I wrote these notes. This These notes have been kind of sitting in our drive for a while. Right. Um, and we're just now doing this. Uh, and literally, since I've ri written this, we've seen Monofire Top. Yep. Which... Blows my mind. Well, but that doesn't mean it's an happy. aggro mono fire. They were relatively. My mono fire yeah. was mid range. There was a very aggro mono yeah, fire. It was running fair. through the two drop tifas and everything. Okay. Like yeah. 
it was very aggro, and I'm very happy to see oh, it. Oh, yeah, for sure. Because this is, like, almost the prime time for it to mm-hmm. come when we're in a very slow, like, heavy meta. Yep. Um, but, you know, that aside, uh, one of the most successful aggro decks is actually one of the best control decks, and that was Turbo Ice. Yeah. Do you want to... Yeah, yeah, I'll uh, cover okay. this one. I was going to say, I think this I, is your expertise. Yeah. I didn't touch an ice. Yeah, plus I played... I think I played it against it a bit more than you did. Because I, pl- I constantly... Pl- I played a bunch of games with David. You, oh, you could say you played all the games with David a lot. And I played a bunch of games with Jeff when Jeff, he was yeah. turning it. So, oh. uh, Turbo Ice Discard... Or Turbo Discard Ice uh, is this kind of combo of control and aggro. I'd argue it was more aggro. Yeah. Um, because you're running... You were running, like, five backups. Mm-hmm. Like, you were running no backups whatsoever. Um, and the whole point of the deck was, on your first turn... You want the opponent to discard at least three. If you could get them down to, like, one or two cards in hand by the end of the turn, like, you basically have game. Mm -hmm. And it did this through two cards that are currently banned. Yep. And I don't think we're ever really going to see them off the ban list. I think we will. We might see Tharmaturge off, but Gesper, I'd argue, unless they errata him, he's not going to come back. Um... No, I can imagine a couple ways they'd get around it, but mm. again, discussion for a different episode. Yeah. So, so Tharmaturge was just a two-drop, just aggro card. It was two-drop one mm-hmm. k. Your opponent discards. If your opponent has less than two, he gets four k. Um, and then Gesper was tap him. Both players discard one. And with a combination of those two, you could just make the opponent discard three. And then mm-hmm. it also ran cards like um, Hero Squall, which was if the opponent has I think three or less cards in hand, it gains haste. Yep. Which was ridiculous. And a bunch of small things. Uh, the, what were the, the DGS Troopers, I think it was? Were they in there? The, no, yeah. it's Earth. What's the ice variant of it? Oh, you're thinking. The ice standard units. I, I forget their names. But they were also yeah. used because you could just add a bunch of two drops to hand. Mm-hmm. And the whole point was just. Oh, no, sorry. It was DGS because yeah. uh, the Earth was WRO. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I'm so stupid. You are you want to put out DGS like as fast as possible, go wide as possible, and then just swing in for game yep. by making the opponent discard so they don't have answers. It's quantity yeah. over quality kind of thing. Yeah. And this also poses a problem with aggro is. As Eric mentioned before, you kind of just want to, like, blow your load onto the board. You want to immediately yep. just have this huge board. The deck had a huge problem with a certain card at the time that's not played anymore, really. Shadow Lord, mm-hmm. which was just break all two drops. Uh, so you immediately lost your Squalls, your th- uh, Thaumaturges, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So if you're playing against a control deck that could put that out early, or if you could even play against a control deck that goes first and is able to put out two or three backups... Yep where they're able to play out their hand every turn. Yeah, if if your opponent gets any kind of delay or a window to make a decision or a move, that that was it. Yeah, and that's the primary uh, issue with aggro, is if they do get that moment of pause, if you do have to wait a turn on something, Mm -hmm. it hurts. Because you can't advance your board state, you can't just go face more. Right. So, And the longer you wait, the better that they're going to do against you. that being said, aggro versus aggro is very fun to watch. Oh, it's yeah. It's very fun to watch two people just go into top deck mode with, like, one backup. Yeah. It is hilarious. You also just yeah. can't... There's no opportunity for the big brain plays. Yeah. Everybody's a smooth brain idiot because yeah. you don't get a choice. Yeah. <laughs> it's a really fun style to watch. It's entertaining yeah. is what it is. Yeah. And uh, as we mentioned before, like, there is there's some complexity to it, but mm-hmm. it is a very fun way to play. If you haven't given it a shot, I really recommend it. Yeah. Because playing aggro is... Very primally, like, yes. satisfying. Some alternative <laughs> options to the uh, to the mono fire variants from back in the day, or mono ice, yeah. uh, turbo discard would be uh, the Golbez decks. Yeah. Um, the other options are something like fire lightning, mm-hmm. um, chocobos, yeah. and some variants of the uh, type zero cadets decks. Yeah. Uh, depends on the style of the person building it, of course. Yeah, our issue is that we just don't really... It's... We mentioned before, and we'll get more into it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's Final Fantasy is an overall very control meta. Yeah. Um, but once again, we'll get into that. But before we get into that, let's move over to combo. Combos. So combo is kind of like a deck that has just a game winning combo that just pushes it over. Like as yeah. soon as you hit that, like you basically won, or you've at least advanced your board state, or you have so much advantage that the opponent can't really do anything about mm-hmm. it. Um, it usually requires a setup, which could in Yu-Gi-Oh, your dream setup was two cards. Yep. And then it explodes into this huge thing. Uh, for other card games, it's a bit more realistically at, like, three or four. 
Um, I think the only, like, borderline instant win combo that we have in Final Fantasy, I think, is, like, a six card. <laughs> it, it's the infinite draw combo. Yeah. Um, and it's, like, a seven card setup that's in five colors. Like, it's so goofy. Um, <laughs> uh, but a combo can either, as I mentioned before, win you the game or put you into a situation that's very hard to lose. And... Uh, everything that we've kind of seen in Final Fantasy has been mainly just value-based. Right. But we'll get into that. So, in other TCGs, uh, in MTG, I'm sure a lot of people are more than familiar with uh, KCI, which was a uh, combo deck that just used artifacts, constantly recycled them, to just kill opponent's face. Uh, to do one gutter shot, which just multiplied to 20-something damage, just insta-kill. Gross. And it only required, like, two or three turns of setup. Like, it was very fast. Um, there's Channel Fireball, which is a very, very old deck. Um, Storm decks are very combo-based. It's, you know, you want that game-winning combo. And uh, Bloom, or I think... I didn't write the full name of it, but it was an, a deck that did very well, like, ages ago. I just watched a YouTube video about it recently, um, where basically there was a magic card. This is a magic card I want to talk about more some other time. Right. But it basically let you play magic or, TZ, or Final Fantasy rules where you pitch a card for two months. Oh, and gross. that was a, another kind of like uh, combo deck that was yeah. very powerful at Can the time. Can imagine, gee, I wonder why. Yeah. And then if you move over to Hearthstone, um, we've seen a lot of these, not so much recently, uh, mm -hmm. but we kind of came out of a meta that had a lot of combo decks. So there was Cthune decks uh, back during Whisper's meta. Uh, Mill Rogue, which has been around for a long time before it lost a card. Uh, big Priest is kind of uh, combo-y. It's just kind of put out a big thing, make sure it doesn't die, swing with it using three cards. Uh, Shutterwalk Shaman, which was a personal favorite of mine. Exodia Mage, which was a personal bane of mine. <laughs> and then Mechathune decks, which I really enjoy playing. Yeah. Um, so all these decks, more so like Mechathune, Cthune, and Exodia Mage, were guaranteed wins if you could land them. Yeah. Uh, Shutterwalk was much of the same where it was either you get an instant win or you have a board full of six sixes that can't be stopped um so hearthstone once again if you played hearthstone like any of these decks will probably trigger war flashbacks <laughs> <laughs> and some of these decks are even still played um but those decks gave just a ridiculous amount of value ridiculous amount of board state or you just won in the case of like exodia mage right um and then we move on to Yu-Gi-Oh, where we can talk about Exodia FTKs, Gemnet FTKs, Goki FTKs. Um, Trickstar FTK. Trick, I was going to say, any burn deck, Trickstars or, yeah. you know, Nurse Burn. Cannon, any variation um, of uh, Cannon Soldier FTK. Yep. Um, so, as we mentioned, as I mentioned before, um, every deck in Yu-Gi-Oh is kind of combo-y. Right. Because you want to kind of go through this motion in which you end on a very strong board yeah you know this the the structure of the game in itself the the syntax of a turn kind of forces you to be a combo type player yeah in most situations so but these decks in particular yeah these decks were very very much so heavily combo, combo was, related if you can hit that you win yeah uh, like for example like exodia fdk like a lot of people uh, everybody knows about exodia yep but Exodia was one of those decks that if you build, like, the Blue Eyes variant, which lets you draw, like, 100 cards in one turn, or if you're running the Dark World variant, which I was running for a little bit. Oh, yeah, I remember that time we played online. Yeah. You're like, here's what happens if there's no ban list in Yu-Gi-Oh, and yeah. you just milled your whole deck in <laughs> I mean, one turn, and then you know, by the time you got to the final card, you're like, oh, I have Exodia, I win. Yeah. I'm like, cool, I didn't get, I literally didn't get a turn because you went first. Yeah, which, uh, we're not gonna, we're never gonna do an episode about it, but I always <laughs> encourage people to look up um, like no banlist Yu-Gi-Oh because it's hilarious it's really the entire really meta funny. is just one deck yep. like there's no going against it the entire meta is exactly one deck um, but yeah so the, uh, FTK and first turn kills are mainly the combo of Yu-Gi-Oh mm -hmm. in an already very combo oriented um, meta but then moving over to Final Fantasy we don't see as many examples yeah, you could argue that a lot of control decks in this game are combo decks and vice versa, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, it's usually pretty clear which one is which. Yeah. Um, and combo decks aren't as present in Final Fantasy as they are in other TCGs, just because the game isn't as slow. Yeah. Well, it is, but isn't. 
the other thing is um, we don't have a true game winning combo. We right. don't have an Exodia. Mm -hmm. uh, the closest that we have is Sin. Yeah. Because that's the only card that legitimately says you win the game. But that's not very reliable. There's a lot of things that can go wrong with it. Um, well, actually, you know what? Um, <laughs> your die in four turns or less deck is yeah. actually very combo centric. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because that's it's a combo suicide it, deck. It's a, but it's a suicide deck. Yeah, it's, it's a not... suicide. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, which reminds me, we need to do an updated episode about that. We really do. I rehauled that deck, and it's twice as fast now. Uh oh. Uh, I think the. I brought it to an event, this is kind of old news, but I brought it to an event a little while ago that it was a, a Wolves Den, mm -hmm. and our goal was, to, my goal was to lose as many games as possible, and um, I think the longest I lasted was turn three, and wow. I was able to consistently get turn one or turn two, it was great. Um, but yeah, so that's that's kind of an example of a combo deck, but I think the only true like game-winning combo deck right now is El Narshsen. Which is very hard to do, mm -hmm. requires a lot of setup, requires way too much work. Yeah, I mean, there are decks that you do, yeah, that you focus on. Like, any, um, I'm trying to think. Uh, actually, the Warriors of Darkness, sort of? Ish. Ish. Same with Warriors Ish. of Light, actually. Yeah. It's, it's all really vague and up in the air, but they're, they're the closest we've got, I think. Yeah. Though I'd even argue do. that those are more mid-range or tempo, or... I don't know. It, it is a little weird. Like, it's... Yeah, they're, they're in that gray area. Yeah. But basically, the closest thing that we do have to combo... There's two examples of it. One of which is Ben now. Mm -hmm. um, one of them is Cactar... Cactar and Adaluma. Like, your dream scenario was to have three Cactar and a Dottaluma. Yep. Like, that was a combo. You wanted to get that together. Mm -hmm. You ran pieces. You ran Yuri Ender, despite yep. the fact that he was out of color, just so you could do that combo. Yep. Um, you ran a lot of things that could search Dottaluma, that could fetch Dottaluma back. Like, there was a lot of things that went into that deck. And it was kind of a combo. Like, it was... It gave you a strong enough board state, and you had a strong enough threat that the opponent couldn't do a whole lot about it. And that's what made it really good. Um, so Dottaluma Cactar or 3D1C is... Um, it, it's the closest that we've come to combo. Yeah, it's, it's all yeah. just a multiplication engine. That's all it is. Yeah. It's a focusing lens. Mm -hmm. But the other one is... This one's a little bit more loose. Yeah. But it's Golbez. Mm -hmm. So Golbez is kind of an aggro combo deck. Right. Because your whole... Your idea is that you want to have Golbez out. You want to kill him, and then you want to spew a bunch of forwards onto the board, and you want to swing for a game. Um, and you could do this through Opus 1, Cloud of Darkness, or a Delita, or something. And it's very aggro, and it's very fun. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also very combo-centric, because you want to have like three or four cards in your hand to try to just push for game. Mm -hmm. And then, obviously, we've mentioned him before. We're mentioning him again now. Um, Ethan. And our playgroup <laughs> runs a Eldnarsh deck that is hilarious and very good. I still need to play against oh, him. Oh, it's scary, dude. It's so scary. But it is essentially a combo deck where it's, I have this card in hand, I have this card in hand, I have a Mist Dragon in case you try to break my board. Mm -hmm. I'm going to Eldnarsh, Eldnarsh special. I've got four forwards. You have one card in hand and one doll forward. I win. And it's very interesting to watch, and it's very interesting to lose to. Um, and it's great to witness. I, <laughs> oh my god, I love that deck. I, I'm, I think we, we talked to Ethan about just like, have an episode where he just talks about that. <laughs> I, dude, let's do it. Let's get yeah. him on here. We'll we'll do a deck profile. We'll have him lay his deck yeah, out and everything. Yeah. That'd be fun. Yeah. Once again, shout out to Ethan if you're listening. <laughs> I think this is like the third shout out he's gotten on our show from you specifically. <laughs> from me I, specifically. I, I barely know him. I, yeah. I haven't got, I haven't gotten a chance to get get familiar with him. Yeah. But, but uh, yeah, that deck is very interesting. Maybe I'll steal his build and then just talk about it on the show or something. But, um... No, we gotta get yeah, the creator. Yeah, yeah, but that's the closest that we've gotten to mm -hmm. a combo deck. Yep. Um, and it is very strong, it's very good, but at the same time, it's not meta. Um, and we haven't really seen a meta combo deck outside of 3D, 1C, and arguably Golbez. Mm -hmm. That's if you want to call them right. combo. I'd argue that they are, but... Only because they rely on pieces. Right. And then the big one that we've been constantly talking about... Is Control. <laughs> the style of which um, 
it focuses on kind of holding board advantage and making sure your opponent gets sort of locked out of doing what they need to do or at least making sure they don't get a chance to gain an advantage over you. Um, it's typically a slower play style, but it's more reactive than it is uh, proactive. Um, you, you, you try to drag the game out to late game or mid game. Mm -hmm. um, you try to make the game as long as possible as opposed to as short as possible. Um, taking less risks, etc. Um, you run a lot of high cost cards, but they have a lot of return on investment as well. Mm -hmm. um, so you're not really risking much. Yeah, or their effect is just so strong. Right, that so it's overwhelming. Yeah, right? it's, it's overwhelming. Um, in yeah, and you the big problem with control is that it, it tends to be a little slow starting up. Like yeah. you have to kind of build it up. You you're going to take three to four damage before you get online. Yeah. Assuming that the other person's playing a little bit more well, aggressive. Yeah, yeah. If you're in another control game, it's not uncommon to have backup pass, backup, yeah. backup pass, backup, backup pass. Well, okay, like let's look at the game we played last night. Yeah. Where I got four damage on tie, but damage, I think, three and four mm -hmm. were two. I hit Valifor, Valifor right in a row, <laughs> and you wiped my <laughs> board yeah, by the well, luckiest yeah. goddamn EXs yeah. I've seen in a long time. And that happens. Yeah, and that's. Cool. Yeah, we're going to talk about that deck. And in you a still recovered. Yeah. And you came back and you held me down. Yeah. And we got to the bottom of our decks and you finally beat me. Yeah, and that's that's kind of the idea of control is yep. that you, you don't mind about taking that early damage. Right. You don't mind. Being behind on life, mm -hmm. uh, as we've said on the show before, the only, the only life, life that matters is the last one. Exactly. Yep. So the, the only important point of damage is the one that kills you. Mm -hmm. um, and being able to just kind of eat those while you're still building up a board state, being able to get a really good combo out to be able to get uh, something that just gives you an insane amount of advantage, mm -hmm. or even just wiping their board, you know, pushing them back a bit, just resetting their advantage yep. is super important to control. Um, but before we get too much into it in Final Fantasy, let's talk about it in other TCGs. This is one... Well, when we get to Warrior... Or when we... Warrior. The spoilers. When we get to Hearthstone, I get to talk about this a lot. Oh, you say, I, yeah, you're... I play exclusively control now. Right. But, <laughs> so, in other TCGs, MTG has Demir Control, which I think was this last... Uh, meta Mardu Pyromancer, which is in modern right now, uh, Jeskai Control, uh, and then Narset Control, which I think is in vintage right now. It's Beats me. It's, I, you know more than I do. It's a very interesting deck because the whole point, mind you, please correct me if I'm wrong, go into the comments, scream at me, whatever. But <laughs> a big thing about MTG or like vintage when everything's legal is searching and constantly drawing cards. Yeah. Narset has the effect that it's uh, you can't draw more than your first card every turn. So it just puts a halt to all those decks. So yep. it's kind of a Narset control. So the, otherwise you're just stopping what they're doing. It's almost like just, an anti-meta situation. Then. It, it really is. Yeah. Uh, but it's anti-meta control. Right. Um, and then moving over to what I know, um, Hearthstone. So we have Auto Warrior, which was my favorite deck I was for a say, while. That was, yeah, Even Lock, which was my favorite deck for a while. Mech Warrior, which is my favorite deck right now and then taunt quest warrior which is another favorite deck of mine but the whole point of these decks is that you just outlast the opponent you just have an answer for what they're going to put down you have a way to kill it you have a way to put a little bit of damage on board you're setting back you're armoring up you're making sure that you don't die mm -hmm. and you're dragging them into that end game where they're going to start hitting fatigue yeah. and then you're hitting fatigue too, but you have too much armor to care. I'm gonna say, yeah, it's, it's just yeah. Put, you're 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 taking your opponent kicking and screaming into the yeah. hellfire. Like I think you even played against me a couple times where mm -hmm. there's just games where I just have like a hundred armor. Yeah, and I'm just sitting in endgame, and yep. even recently, um, she didn't come out recently, but there's a card called Grand Archivist where it's you discover five cards you put two copies of each into your deck and then you right. replace your deck with it yeah and it's just so funny to be able to go into turn 50 and turn 60 and just constantly just wait out this opponent while they mm -hmm. refuse to die and you're like i'm still sitting at 40 armor and right? full health so have fun yep like it's, and it's it's like in starcraft yeah. that one terran who who lifts and hides one building yeah and then there's nothing left on the battlefield so the opponent has to build area units search every corner of the map yeah. just to kill it mm -hmm. like you the whole plan is that you just outlast the opponent. Yep. You just bring them to their last life. You, yep. 
or even you have a, kind of like an end game. You have that end game value. You have a very strong way to finish off the game. And we're going to talk about a little bit of a spoiler, but we're going to be talking about the pain ban and or the Riku ban. And we're a bit behind on this. Very behind on it, yeah. But this is kind of important to the discussion. But right. uh, before we hop into FFTCG. In Yu-Gi-Oh, you see it in Guru Control, which I don't know anything about, to be honest. Yeah, same. Um, I've just seen it mentioned quite a bit. Right, Monarchs. Yeah. Pendulum Control, which is a lot of Pendulum decks, to be, to yeah. be fair. Grave Keepers, and if I recall correctly, sorry, IIRC, to talk like the millennials we are, <laughs> uh, I, I do believe Trap Tricks had a little bit of control to it. Yeah, Trap yeah. Tricks, uh, Hat is what it was Yeah, called. that was the and, one that I yeah. had to it, deal it with It was a lot. very good, like, anti-meta Yeah. Uh, it was a good anti-meta control deck. Like, it was... You're right, you're right. That's yeah. a good example, too. Gotcha. Um, but getting into FFTCG, most decks are control-ish, mm -hmm. or mostly control... They have an um, element on some level. Yeah, and then they've been topping almost every format. If you look back in the day that we had uh, Lightning Ice, which was kind of this vaguely aggro, more control deck. Right. Uh, more recently, we have Mono Ice. Mono Wind is very control Oh yeah. Heavy. I'd argue more mid range or even tempo y, but. I would call it tempo, yeah. Yeah. Um, but. Whew, sorry. <laughs> uh, but we've always seen it. And as someone who plays Mono Ice, a very controlled deck, yep. like it's. I, I like it when we go into that last 10 cards of the deck. When oh, yeah, you like, when I, we have those moments, we get tense. Yeah. It always ends in the 300 yeah. IQ plays. Yeah, as, yeah, I was going to say, as we joke with our playgroup, like. 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 yeah, right? plays where it's like, I'm going to do this to do this to do this. Yeah, like people joke around. I like to joke around like, I'm a very unga bunga smack it till yeah. it dies <laughs> player. Some, I just, I put on the facade, yeah. like, get me down to that last like 15, 10 cards. Yeah. All of a sudden, my brain expands. You're doing and fucking I'm, trig. And <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm doing trig. trig every three seconds. You know, I'm Trigonometry, a, I'm a, is that what it's Trigonometry. Trigonometry. Yeah, I'm a, a galaxy brain player if yeah. I have less than 20 cards in my deck. Yeah, and it's just <laughs> having these super complex plays, and it's so satisfying. I'm a control player. I I was in denial about it for a long time. Yeah, no, but that I'm, is your style. I'm definitely a control player, yeah. and... There is just that great thing of... It's almost like solving a puzzle, you know? Where mm -hmm. it's like, I know how to break your board state. I know what you have in hand. I know how to beat it. Yeah. And just being able to get that, like, click of, like... So I played a lot of Portal. I, yeah, I played a lot of Portal. Uh, but being able to get that click and we're like, I know exactly what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I'm going to beat you. And it's great. It's such a good feeling. <laughs> I just... Just this last, uh, this last week, I had a match with Jeff about that. Yeah. Where he just had this full board, and I was just like, oh, if I do this, 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 and then this, it gives me just enough to kill. And he's like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> so so I was laughing a second ago, because you were talking about this stuff, and all I could, when you said the click, all I could think of was Jimmy Neutron's brain blast! <laughs> brain blast! <laughs> oh, I'm going to yell that next time I'm playing a control matchup. Uh, but for other examples, oh, uh, yeah. so we brought up Mono Ice, mm -hmm. uh, and Ice Earth is another good example of it. Right. Uh, Ice Earth was really good at it, because you let the opponent build. And you and built then, a bit slower, and then you slam down a Shintoto, even it out, and then you... That's when the real game begins. Yeah. You're basically paying three damage to get half of their deck gone. Right. Um, and then there's Water Fasoya, but really, I'd say a lot of different Fasoya variant decks, because yeah. there, there's, you know, damage control Fasoya, there's Water Fasoya, there's... No, it's... it's that's, that's mostly what comes to mind right now. I was going to yeah. say your fire for soil. I'm like, no, nah, it's just hard aggro. Yeah. But there was, also, hard aggro. there was also Wonder Twins, which oh, was yeah. uh, a very, which was fire water aggro, or not aggro, fire water control, mm -hmm. uh, mono water for soya, which we mentioned. And then right. mono wind, which we, we talked about that a earlier. bit. Yeah. And then Weewa, which I've been messing with now yeah, that we have, have the Riku ban. A lot of people have um, actually been playing around with that lately. I think it's yeah. one of the biggest, fastest spreading meta decks of of this game of, right now. Of 2019, really. Yeah, definitely of the year. Yeah, but Weewa was... It's still a very interesting deck, uh, despite the fact that they lost Riku, mm -hmm. which, once again, we're going to get into right. in a second. Um, it's still good. And you even saw that kind of yesterday when we were playing, because um, I'm kind of messing around with it. I want to kind of see right. how much losing Riku really affected the deck. Um, and it kind of didn't. It kind of did. It kind of didn't. didn't. Yeah. It's... We'll get into it. Mm -hmm. um, but Weewa is another great example of control. It's a lot of removal. You're just playing the Porum to get the Vampires. Right. Or the Valifors. You're playing Vina to combo it with Valifor. You're reactivating stuff. You're killing stuff. Like, it's a lot of that. It's 
constantly yeah. that. Um, with that all said, do we want to talk about the subsets of each of these a little bit, or do we uh, want to kind of hold off on that for later? I think a we whole can, separate episode about it. I think it's worth it to mention tempo and um, mid range. Yeah. Uh, so when we were after I wrote the notes for this episode, um, after we wrote the notes for this episode. No, you you wrote them. Are you sure? I know you contributed some stuff. I very little on this yeah. one. Let's be real here. Yeah. You're the one who's reading most of it. Yeah. You're the one who was prepared. I, I w- I'm <laughs> just kind of going with it. <laughs> You're all right. <laughs> I, I kind of am. We do. We do. It, it is fun because we do have an interesting dynamic, dynamic on yeah. this. Yeah, you're kind of the pre-prep. Because I'm the pre... I'm a lot of the, like, forward bit, and you're kind of the behind the scenes a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, we get to kind of converge on this when we talk, which is yeah. always nice. Um Wow, it's actually yeah. kind of turning out like 7th grade and 8th grade when I was in stage crew for the productions. I love you. Thanks. And I'm the star! <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't have the face for this, which is why this episode's audio only. Are you a dwarf giant? <laughs> totally. <laughs> what? Anyway. Um, so, what was I going to... Oh, um, so tempo and mid-range. Mm-hmm. So, while well, after we wrote this episode, you had a party. And right. I ended up talking to a friend of ours, Andrew, mm-hmm. quite a bit. And I mentioned this episode, and I mentioned ideas that I had for it. If we could have a consultant on this show, I'd want it to be Andrew. I mean, we have a lot of people we could bring in, yeah. but he's probably the first one we'd call for a particular topic. Yeah, and he's... Andrew has a lot of knowledge about both Final Fantasy and card games he's been playing for Yeah, he's been playing time. card games for a long time. Yeah. He's very he's very prevalent in the competitive scene, too. He plays... Yeah, especially with Weiss. He pl- well, he used to play a lot of Magic, Yeah, and then he... Now he plays a lot of Weiss Schwartz. Yeah. So. Yeah, he's probably, once again, he's the closest thing that we have to a consultant for mm-hmm. this show. Oh, yeah. Um, but he kind of talked to me more, because I said, like, well, I generally feel that tempo and mid-range are kind of versions of aggro and control. And he's like, eh, it's a bit more nuanced on that. And the way he described it is Rock, Paper, Lizard, Spock. Yep. And how they do have kind of matchups. I... I'm not going to say I, like, fully agree with it. I do feel like they're, everything can be kind of brought under the umbrella of aggro control combo. But both tempo and mid-range are kind of a mix of control and aggro and control and combo. Right. So for tempo, it's mainly wanting to control the game and having the game go through certain beats. Yeah, well, it's, you're controlling the pace of the game. You're making sure that it moves a very specific way yeah. as opposed to just, you know, playing reactively or... You know, taking it slow in general. Yeah, you're making sure that you hit these kind of beats of the match. Yeah, you're... And you're always going to come ahead. Yeah, you're aiming for particular milestones. Yeah, and that's that's tempo. And we've seen that in Hearthstone with mm-hmm. Tempo Mage. Um, obviously, that's very popular in Magic Tempo. There's a bunch of Tempo decks in right. Magic. Um, Yu-Gi-Oh! doesn't really have it anymore. But back in the day, Monarchs were kind of a tempo-y deck. Mm-hmm. Um, and then mid-range is being able... It's a step after aggro, really. It's where you do a little build up and then you just swing in for a game. Yep. And that's definitely what my mono red used to be. What are my neighbors doing? Jesus Yikes. Christ! Calm down, people. Weird. At least anyway. they're not screaming like they were yesterday. Yeah, they're playing mono flyer. <laughs> in bed. <laughs> Whoa. This is a this is a family program. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyway, um, so yeah, so mid range is this kind of weird mix between control and aggro in a way where. You want to have this setup that Control has, and you mm-hmm. want to have the answers Control has. You want to survive till that mid-game, but at that mid-game is when you want to hard Yeah, commit. you just That's... want to make sure you take your opponent out by a certain point, because if you don't, you're going to have a really big hill to get over. Yeah. So you don't have a lot of late-game threats, but you're trying to... You have enough early and mid-game threats to just seal the deal. Yep. Um, and we've seen that a little bit in certain builds of ICE. Um I'd even argue that like Pelimporum or Wonder Twins was vaguely mm-hmm. mid rangey because yeah. you do want to. Your goal was to hit, have them hit six and then Pelimporum for game, um, while also controlling with Fasoya right. or just get rid of blockers. There was a lot of like anti blocking stuff in that yeah. deck. Um, so we we definitely see it in FFTCG. I'm having a little trouble pinning it. Um, and maybe this is something that we can revisit. Maybe yeah, we'll definitely want to revisit that at some um, point. But that's something else that you should be aware of. Yeah. And you should kind of pay attention to. Because you might be playing mid-range. 
You might be playing tempo and you didn't even know it. Actually, I would say that my uh, my old Earth Ice Standard Units deck is a very yeah. mid-range type of deck. Yeah, because um, you were putting out backups and then yep. you eventually just went super wide yep. and you were able to just swing in for game. Yeah, so that was that was a fun one. Um, I'm trying to think of who else's stuff was related to that. Oh, you could you could argue some people's um, the Mono Earth, aka Mono Girth. Yeah. Thank you, Jesse. <laughs> yeah. Um, for naming that one. Uh, yeah, there's there's some, some a lot of Prish. Uh, yeah, his his, but also generally a lot of Earth decks uh, are kind of defensive mid range. Um, Ex Seven is yeah. pretty kind of like mid range, where mm-hmm. you are kind of you're building up with so much value in early game that by mid game you can just overwhelm the opponent. Right. Um, and using EXs, you're more than happy to take damage early game, mm-hmm. you're more than happy to take damage mid game, because that just helps you push game yeah. uh, later. Um, but, yeah, so Monogreth is another good example, uh, 37 EX or EX7 is another good example. Um, but that's basically all we could really talk about. I want to consult Andrew about it a, a bit more. Oh, yeah. Um, before we do a full episode on it. Once we, As with every episode, we might eventually revisit this, we might talk about it a little bit more after we see more decks, after mm-hmm. we see more metas. Right. Um, we actually need to do a uh, a meta update. Yeah. On the, we have we have about a good two and a half sets worth of yeah. info to go over. I say we wait until we're getting Opus Eleven, and then we have a nice yeah. like, three Opus slot. Yeah. Let's actually yeah. Three, let's just make that kind slot. of our our, yeah. Yeah, our window there. Every three sets, we'll just do yeah. another meta uh, update analysis. video. Yeah. yeah. Analysis. Because it's been about a year. Thinking on it, almost a year. Has it? Uh oh no, a little bit. No, it's less been than a year. Less than a year. We'll see. Yeah. We'll talk about it. Um, but anyway, moving on to the last thing we wanted to talk about this episode, uh, we're going to be talking about the Riku ban. Obviously, this this isn't the most uh, current. <laughs> thing no, it is very yeah, it is very behind uh, but behind the times. At news. the same time, we haven't seen any bans since this. Mm-hmm. Um, it's still kind of recent. Yeah, and there's not really a lot of talk of ban since yeah. this either. Yeah, it's the game kind of seems good, and this is. I'd even argue that this is the most controversial ban. That really? They've done You'd say so? I, I'd argue. It's funny because I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, I I kind of agree with the ban in this, but I'd even argue that it still wasn't super necessary. Yeah. And I'll kind of get into that. Um, so I'll just kind of go off with my bit. So was this super needed? No. Um, I'd rather have seen like Valifor or Zidane banned. Uh, our playgroup kind of knows. I don't have a hate campaign against Zidane. <laughs> but I always feel like that's a card that's so singularly strong that deserves a ban because it's the fact that you get to look at the opponent's hand. We went over this during the ban list episode. Right. Um, but Zidane is this very strong card. And then Valifor, especially with the most recent forum, is this insane card. And being able to just reactivate stuff is a little busted. The only issue with it is that you have to have Yuna out, which isn't hard at all. Well, right. Super easy. Um so I think those probably would have been two better bands. Our playgroup has said, I want to see Valifor banned, and I don't disagree with them. Um, and they are problem cards, and they probably will always see play as long as uh, Wind Water exists. Right. And right now it looks like we're mainly focusing towards uh, Wind. Now that we've had a little... This is actually kind of a good time to talk about this, because we've had time to see the effect of it. Right. Um, and people are shifting towards Mono Wind, mm-hmm. rightfully so. But we are still seeing a little wind water. Um, but all that being said, uh, it's not a bad ban, and I see why they did it. Uh, Hearthstone is kind of in a similar position to FFTCG with Control Warrior. Once again, this is a deck I've been playing tons, and it actually just recently uh, received a nerf. It's not a big one. <laughs> uh, Dr. Boom costs two more. Oh, yeah. That's it. Oh, yeah. Like, it's not a big deal. Um, so Warrior brings you to fatigue and then uses... And is like specifically made for endgame and just to outlive the opponent using Archivist or if you mm-hmm. could get a Mechathune off if you really want to. Um, and Wee Wall wasn't too different from that. You mainly kind of played to that endgame. You played a very control heavy. You didn't worry about putting the opponent to seven damage. If you did, it's nice, but you didn't have to. Mm-hmm. And now Wee Wall kind of has to focus on that a bit more. But the big reason why Riku was there was just to guarantee that win. It was just to guarantee that when you guys are both at 10 cards, you have that slight advantage. You're putting them one more card deep. And that, along with reactivation shenanigans, is what kind of pushed that deck over. And that's what 
it was basically a win condition, really. Um, and taking that away makes it a little bit harder. It's still possible. You just don't have a consistent way of doing it. Right. Um, so taking away Riku is kind of the same as like kind of taking a, taking away Archivist from Control Warrior. Like, it's it takes away the guaranteed win, and it hurts the deck, but it doesn't kill it. Uh, so Control Warrior even saw the nerf in Archivist, where Archivist went from 8 mana to, t to 9. Mm -hmm. um, which doesn't seem like a big deal, but you can't repeat it anymore using um, Brewmaster or Zola. And that did hurt the deck. It, you only get those 10 cards, and if the person can outlast those 10 cards, like, you're on kind of an even play playing field. You're still winning. Right. But, um, but the deck is still very playable, and Europe is still alive. You still have Yuna, you still have the really good pain that just draw a card, the free pain that draws you a card. Mm -hmm. And the Riku that you have to pick isn't great, but it lets you kind of overcommit for a turn. It lets you kind of play that mid rangey deck. Yeah. Where you can just hard overcommit yeah, it's mid game. A, it's a temporary shift yeah. of deck style. Yeah, you don't want to run this Riku, but you kind of have to. And right. it's not terrible. It's not the best Riku. There's but worse options. Yeah, there's much worse options, and it also feels so good to hit it off of VX. Oh, I bet it does. When you just like accidentally overcommit and they throw it on a Hasty Boy or something, and it's like, oh, there's all my backups up. Ooh, whoopsie doodle. <laughs> and you still get to run Shinra. You still get to run Valifor, uh, Fam Fritz. You're still running Palom. Like, there's still a lot of great cards in that deck, which is why I've I've been playing it a lot recently. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy it. Um, but yeah, so ultimately, what I'm saying about it is, was the ban super needed? No. Valifor probably should have gotten banned instead. Was it still a good choice? Like, yeah. Yeah, it still removed the end game for the deck. It didn't kill it, and it shouldn't have. No no ban should absolutely kill a deck unless it's that oppressive. Right. Like Turbo Discard. Uh, but... Yeah, so I, I had mixed feelings about it at first. Now I just feel good about it, and now that we've seen the impact of it, I think it was a good ban. So the way I'm looking at it, if we can shift over to me with the camera. Hello. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> uh, we, we totally have a camera on, guys. Mm -hmm. I'm just editing it out because we're both naked right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anywho, so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just naked except for this Blink-182 shirt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so uh, the way I'm looking at it, I also agree the ban wasn't needed. Um, if I had to pick a card that would be banned over the Riku, I'd ha if I had to pick, I guess I'd pick Zidane. Um, I wouldn't enthusiastically pick Zidane, but he's, you know, again, of these three cards we're discussing, yeah. it'd be Zidane, you I guess. You got double Valifor and you're still saying Zidane. Well, yeah, because I actually, <laughs> yeah. I like Valifor. I do like Zidane. I don't really care about the Riku. That being said... Um, you know, you, you have the lens of looking through Hearthstone and, mm -hmm. and Magic. I don't play those games as much. Yeah. Um, admittedly, all of my Hearthstone info and, and knowledge and whatnot comes through Tyler. He net decks a lot for me. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I can drive, just got to build me the car. I, I like to joke that I'm not a deck builder, I'm a deck architect. Yeah. Where I just, I take what other people have and I just refine it a bit yeah. more. Um, and then I just kind of spread more. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then everybody builds their own version of it. They add it too. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, uh, you know, Wiwa Yerp is still a very playable deck. Um, but I would definitely argue the ban was not that necessary because um, the way I look at it is most players should be able to overcome that concern of, you know, oh, you're getting milled one every so often. or Because realistically, it's not going to happen every single turn, yeah. right? That's a dream scenario for the Yerp player. But, you know, sure, if it's a mirror match, you're just going to keep doing it to each other and it's going to even out anyway. Mm -hmm. um, if it's not a mirror match, then I I'm assuming that the other player is just managing to deal with it. Now, granted, if you get the worst luck ever and all of your good summons are thrown into the, into the break zone via the mill, or your opponent just gets a lot of reactivations really quickly and just consistently uses that, that effect. Yeah, to, you're getting milled like four times a turn. <laughs> yeah, then it becomes a problem. But... The way I mean, I'm just how do I put it? I don't think that's going to be the consistent scenario. Um, now, granted, I haven't played enough games against this deck to say that's true. Um, you know, maybe it was really that big a problem, but uh, I think the I'd, I'd argue the designers saying 
you know, hey, we think this is going to be a problem or this is a problem of this mill situation happening too much or too, too strongly um, that it's too good of an effect. I, I don't want to call it fickle, but I do not think that is a very strong defense of that ban. Mm-hmm. Um, now, that being said, they're the designers. They know what's coming in the next four sets. Yeah. They're making it. Yeah, so, everything's already, like, <laughs> pretty Yeah, planned. right? So, who knows? Maybe they're making some mill stuff that's a little bit more balanced later, and they feel like this is going to very much tip the, tur- you know, tip the balance of it. And, uh, you know, the seesaw is going to go one way really bad if, if Riku is still on the board. Yeah. Um, but we don't know. Yeah. So, best, best option we have right now is, unfortunately or fortunately, depending on your outlook, um, trust the designers. Mm-hmm. Um, from a player's perspective, I don't think it's necessary. From the, the lens of somebody who can see into the future, they say differently. So I guess that's all we've got right now. Yeah. Yeah. I, we. This is probably the closest that we've come to agreeing Yeah, agreeing on, on it. Yeah. <laughs> Typically, we, we disagree on bands pretty yeah, strongly. Yeah, but I, I, I hear your points, and I agree with it. Because the thing is, it was this... I feel like Riku is a little bit more important than you were saying, but that being said, it's it wasn't it wasn't like a this card needs to be banned scenario. Yeah, it's and I'll even admit, like I've been I freaked out about Veritas a while ago. Like, yeah, we had our ban episode where I said like this card should be banned. Right, like this is the only card that should be banned, and now he's seeing much less play. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's 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 just yeah. less of a cornerstone of he, a lot of decks he he's still a good card but he hasn't dropped in price he's yeah. still 40 friggin dollars yeah right up there with wall and and i mean he, he knocked down a stinny and down to like 20 but still whatever yeah and this is i think this is really the only ban that you haven't seen we have seen a decline in wind water but there wasn't a massive but outcry it wasn't like a like shot down wind water like, yeah if you look at like 3d1c like that was run in a lot of decks that deck went down in a blaze of glory and then dotaluma got banned yeah and same with turbo ice turbo ice was played a lot yep and then as soon as it got as soon as it got so, announced that it was going to be banned that deck like shot down like there were still quite a few in in uh i want to say nats that year top eight of worlds um had a few there was one in the top nine decks yeah um or from the top three players. Because right. um, the other two actually just opted for normal mono ice. Which right. I was interesting. Which, I mean, fine. It yeah. worked, obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah, obviously. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're in. It's. Weewa still exists, right? Mm-hmm. And it's still a decent deck. It's. I'd got. I'd argue that it's gotten stronger with Vaughn mm-hmm. because you can hit Porums. And I'm also yeah. still trying to find a good three drop water forward to hit with it. I was thinking Ash, but eh. Um, eh. Yeah, actually, oh, yeah. yeah, Ash would be yeah. pretty solid. I'll, I'll think about it. But, uh, yeah, we will still exist. And that's the big difference between this ban and the previous ones, mm-hmm. is that, yeah, it hit it, but the deck is still alive. Yeah. It's still thriving. It's still being played. It's still topping. I want to say, the, the, this, I think this ban actually turned out better than any other, simply because the deck is still alive, as Ty mentioned multiple times. Yeah. But also... Because again, nobody there was no public outcry. Nobody screamed their head off about mm. it. Nobody freaked out. Um, it didn't immediately have any kind of impact on yeah. the meta scene. It didn't have a whole lot of impact on the lower level player scene. Yeah. It didn't have an impact on the market at all. Yeah. Um, it, it was just that the Riku went down like from eight dollars to like. Was it really eight dollars? Yeah, yeah. It was. Wow. I, I, I'm call me Boo Boo the fool. I actually I traded eight bucks for it, and I, hmm. I, I hard regret it now. Obviously. Well, yeah. But you I, know, the worst part, I had a pile of them. I should have yeah. gotten value out of them while I could. Yeah, yeah. That's well, that's just the, the nature of hindsight fans. is twenty twenty. Well, right. And that's obviously we saw a lot of that in Yu Gi Oh. Where it's like, ah, oh, I should have sold this card. <laughs> like, ah, oh, I didn't think it was gonna get banned. Ah, oh, I didn't think that would come off the ban list. I should yeah. stop filing them and stuff like that. But. It's it's kind of the nature of the beast. Yep, that is trading it, it, card games for you. Yeah, it, it happens. But, yeah. I mean, it um, could be Yu-Gi-Oh. We blew ninety dollars per card on a play set, and then it got banned two weeks later. Yeah, it, it happens. Could, could be worse. Yeah, it it sucks, but it happens. Yep. Or it gets just reprinted out of the blue. Right. Stay tuned yeah. for our why we left Yu-Gi-Oh episode. Yeah, yeah, we. <laughs> Uh, a little behind the scenes, we tried to record it, and it ended up being an hour it was and a half. Terrible. It was an hour and a half of a mess. Yeah. Oh my god. Re- re-listening to a lot of that footage, we we were very much looping and wrapping. Yeah, we back just talked around. in circles. Yeah, it was a lot room. of. It was a big echo chamber. It was bad. Yeah. 
That, that's why you write notes, kids. Yup. <laughs> like this episode, I thought this episode went pretty good. Yeah. Uh, mind you, we're still recording it. I mean, yeah, but we yeah. went off the cuff just enough, I think. Yeah. Anyway, just, you guys um, be the judge. Do we suck? Do we do we suck or do we suck? Yeah. And if we extra suck, donate to our call fee so we can get better. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but to get into our little like, uh, I think Command Zone calls it the end step, <laughs> and I joke. I, you know, I'm a fan of them. Right. Um, but like to kind of wrap up the episode, um, we have a coffee. You should donate to it. Um, once again, I think we mentioned this in one episode so far. The artist uh, that did our icon is uh, M Boogie. Mm-hmm. Um, you'll see their link in our description. description. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then one thing that we do want to kind of tease is hopefully sometime next week after this episode mm-hmm. goes live, yep. we're going to be posting a survey that will also probably be in the description. Um, and we're just going to try to get some people to, to fill it out. We want to kind of talk about it. Um, recently in our play group, uh, we've been talking about locals a lot. Um, we've been seeing a bit of a lull in our play groups. Yep. And that's kind and of the fatigue. Yeah. Really. Long story short, we just need some data, um, yeah. on, on a higher level and on a deeper level. Uh, we're asking, we're going to be asking a decent variety of questions, uh, just to get an idea of some demographics in the game. Yeah. And... Your play group, how you feel about your play group. Yeah. Uh, how often people show up. We don't need to spoil too much. Yeah. But uh, ultimately, yeah, there, there's going to be some good relevant questions. You know, we're not going to ask how tall the people are. We're not yeah. going to ask what hair color you have or, you know, we're how not... many bottles of water you drank last week. How many copies of Fasoya everybody has in their binder. How many Veritas everybody has. Like, yeah. It's, we're going to, they're going to be very loose questions. Yeah. Um, and we appreciate if you filled it out. We want to try to get as many people to fill it out as possible because mm-hmm. we just want to, you know, we want to talk about it. And it's, um, like we said, it's something that's been coming up a lot in our play group, uh, and it's something that we'd love to see on a much wider, larger scale. Right. So, uh, I, you know, in conclusion, thank you guys for watching. We always appreciate any of you listen, etc. cetera. Yeah. Um, any feedback is always appreciated. We do read the comments. I yeah. do recall Harding and, and pinning a couple on a, one of our uh, yeah. earlier episodes. If anybody wants to just tell us why we was the worst and why um, Vaughn is the second coming of Christ, feel free to. <laughs> You're subtle, aren't you? <laughs> I'm super subtle. <laughs> All right. But if you want to kind of tell us your opinions, how you feel about the Riku ban, how you feel, if you feel like we mislabeled any decks, if you think that you know, uh, mono water Fasoya is mm-hmm. more of a tempo cu- tempo deck or yeah. something. Feel free to tell us. You know, we we love hearing back from you guys. And you know what? I'd actually think it'd be some good interaction with you guys if we could uh, get some deck profiles in the, in the comments mm-hmm. of your favorite decks of your favorite control style or yeah. fa- favorite deck style rather. Uh, um, or the thing I really want to see. Give me your jank Sin Eldnarsh combo deck. Yeah, Ty loves that That just stuff. instantly wins the game. Oh, yeah. I want to see it. <laughs> but yeah, definitely post uh, post your favorite, post your favorite deck of your favorite play style yeah. if you want to. Uh, you can use FF decks to make it, or you can be an absolute mad lad and just type the whole thing out <laughs> in the comments. Um, type, type out the whole thing. Type out why you run every card. Why you run ratios of each? Yeah, card. we want your twenty-page <laughs> dissertation by next Friday. By next Friday, on my in my comment section. <laughs> yeah, right. And we're gonna run it through. Um, oh man, what's that uh, plagiarism checking website? Uh, Black turn it in. Oh, you turn, turn it, it in. Yeah, we'll it. turn it. We're gonna use yeah, turn we're gonna it run it through turn it in to make sure you didn't plagiarize. Yeah, it. exactly. Yeah. So uh, yeah, thanks thanks for uh, giving us the uh, the view to listen, guys. We yeah, appreciate thanks. it, and uh, we will see you all later. Peace.